Good morning. So here I will be reading Judith Ortiz Koffer's essay, More Room, and making its analysis. So you can see on the screen the picture of the writer, Judith Ortiz Koffer. Let's read, let's begin by reading about the author's introduction. So as we can see, Koffer was born on February 24, 1952, and she died on December 30, 2016. And she was a Puerto Rican American author. So we know that Puerto Rico is an unincorporated territory of America. So you can see her marginal status because our course says voices from the margin. So we can argue that this essay has the voice of the margin in two senses. One, this is the voice of a woman, a female author. So we guess that the essay will raise female issues and women are marginalized, we all agree. Then she is also a Puerto Rican author, so she is not from the American mainstream. In that sense, uh, this text is the voice of the people from the margin. So she wrote on a number of uh, genres like poetry, short story, autobiography, essays, and she also wrote young adult fiction. So <clears throat> she drew heavily from her personal experience as Puerto Rican American woman. As we know, that most of the nonfiction writings emerge from the writer's personal life experiences. And uh, Judith uh, Ordis Koffer also uses her personal experience in this essay. And she writes about the life of the Puerto Rican American women. She brings poetic perspective to the intersection of memory and imagination. So in this essay, More Room, you will see that Koffer not only remembers a lot of things, but she also uses imagination. This is how we say this is a course on creative nonfiction. What she remembers is the reality, nonfiction. And what she imagines is creative. So Koffer investigates women's issues. She writes about the Latino culture and the American South. She weaves together private life and public space by intimately portraying family relationships. In this essay, more room also you will see Koffer portrays the relationship between daughter and mother and other family members. And she makes a very rich, vivid description of people and place. Okay. Uh, as we read, Ortiz Koffer is best known for creative nonfiction works. So let's begin reading the essay more room from first paragraph. So I'm in the first paragraph. Okay. My grandmother's house is like a chamber 
Nautilus. It has many rooms, yet it is not a mansion. It is, its proportions are small and its design simple. It is a house that has grown organically according to the need of its inhabitants. To all of us in the family, it is known as La Casa de Mama. It is the place of our origin. They stay for our memories and dreams of island life. Let's analyze, comment. So the writer begins by talking about her grandmother's house. And she compares the grandmother's house with Nautilus. Nautilus is a sea creature. And right here you can see how the island life is portrayed. She compares the house with a creature found in the ocean. <clears throat> so a house is a non-living structure that houses living beings in it, whereas a Nautilus is a living creature. So in this paragraph, we see a comparison between a non-living structure, the house, and a living creature, the Nautilus. If you Google the picture of Nautilus, you will see that the Nautilus has many chambers in its skeleton. And the house may be like a Nautilus because the house has many rooms. So what is similar between the house and the Nautilus? The house has many rooms and the creature Nautilus has many chambers. A mansion also has many rooms. Then why does she not say that the house is like a mansion? Now this house has a small proportion and simple design. A Nautilus also has a small proportion and Nautilus also has simple design of its chambers. If you, I'll show you the picture in a while. So how is a house and a Nautilus comparable? Uh, I have this question, but I don't have the answer. Then she says that the house has grown uh, organically. Look, she looks at the house as if it has life. And this is very important. Pay attention. See the imagination. She imagines that the house is not just a structure. House is like organism. It has life. And she says that the house grew according to the needs of its inhabitants. As more children were born, new rooms were added to it. So some rooms are very old because they were made when older children were born. Some rooms are quite new because they were made when the younger children were born. Let's ask a question. What things might reside inside the body of a living organism like Nautilus? What things will you, will you find inside the body of Nautilus? In what sense can a house grow like a living organism? I don't have an answer. I want you to imagine as you listen to my questions. How can a house grow like a living organism? Why does he compare the house with a Nautilus and not with any other creature? The house has a name, La Casa de Mama. What is the importance of this Spanish name? Why does he call this? Why does he use Spanish language? Or I don't know, is it Puerto Rican? La Casa de Mama. What is this language? Why does the writer use this language and not English translation? Maybe she is asserting her ethnic identity, margin from voices from the margin. Do you see any identity of the people of margin in this name, La Casa de Mama? 
in what sense is the place a place of the origin of people who live in it? How can a house stay memories, as she says, and dreams of the life of its inhabitants? She says that this house is a stage where our memories and dreams come. Why does the narrator not use the word home? Like Changrili uses the word home. Changrili says home, but Koffer says house. Do home and house have same connotation? If not, why? What is the mode of writing in this paragraph? She is using present simple tense and there is description. There is imagery. What rhetorical strategy do you see being employed by the narrator in this paragraph? Description, narration. Is it analogy? Probably. She is comparing house with the Nautilus. Is it simile, metaphor? Right. So let me show you the picture of Nautilus. I can see this is the skeleton, bone of Nautilus. See the chambers. And as the Nautilus grows, chambers are added. And here is a house, maybe a Puerto Rican design. Here also, as this is the house where she lived. So let me come back to the paragraph again and say something more. So you see a figure of a speech. The house is like a chambered Nautilus, comparison, simile. House has grown organically personification. The house is presented as living thing. The house, the, the house is known as La Casa de Mama, Mama's palace, Mama's mansion, Casa, castle, Mama's castle, Spanish language. What is his Spanish? It is a place of our origin. How can people originate in a house? It is a stage of our memories. Do you understand how your memories are associated with your house? You can take your copy and pen and write what memories come when you remember your house. And what dreams you have. Island life. She is a Puerto Rican writer. And Puerto Rico is an island under the control of America. So write in the first paragraph of the SMO room, writer introduces the major character, grandmother. And in most parts of the essay, you will see Koffer talks about her grandmother and the house and the people. So this essay is about a real person, grandmother, and a real place, La Casa de Mama. Let's read next paragraph. I brought some images from Facebook. I found that there is a Facebook page in the name of Judith or this coffer, though she is dead. And here I see some posts made by her. And you will see that coffer has a special attachment with home. In spite of the laws of physics, it is possible to go back in time and to retrieve what you need from the rooms you once inhabited. And this is what exactly Koffer does in this essay. In the essay More Room, Koffer go back, Koffer goes back in time and she brings memories from the rooms where she once lived, grandmother's room. This retrieval of memory to a writer, a sort of mining for grace. The mother load is yours if you can be a re-entering the landscape of what was and what may have been and bring it back as language. This is what she does. Okay. You can see this is the house where Koffer lived. Here is another post from Facebook. Making plans to travel home for the holidays. What does home mean to you? She puts a question. So you can see Koffer has a special attachment to home, like Sangrili. I absorb it all through my pores. It remains with me still as a vague urge to reconnect. Look, she talks about the home. From where you need to go, published in Lessons from the Rider's Life, 2011. This is the place where she lived. Look, the house. She had little mantras that she invoked on different occasions when we would arrive at her house from our shopping 
expeditions or day trips, she would always say, Que bueno, llegar a casa. I don't know the meaning of the sentence. How good it is, oh yes, here. How good it is to come home. So you can see some similarities between Changrili's essay, Coming Home Again, and Koffer's essay, More Room, because in both of these essays, writers share memories of the home and the people in it. So let's move to paragraph two. Let me read. I remember how in my childhood it sat on stilts. So I remember, present simple tense, how in my childhood it sat on stilts, past tense. So she is remembering her house. This was before it had a downstairs. Look, she earlier said that the house developed, grew organically like a creature. Now here in paragraph 2, she is telling what she means by saying that the house developed like a living being. Look, first the house did not have a downstairs. <laughs> it's interesting. The downstairs was added when people needed this. It rested on its perch like a great blue bird. See the simile here. It means house. In reading, this is called, what do you call, pronoun reference. It means house rested on its perch like a great blue bird. See the simile here. The house is compared to a blue bird. I'll show a picture in a while. Perch means the birds sitting on something. Not a flying sort of bird, more like a nesting hen. Look, now she's, she's comparing the house with another creature, the hen, nesting hen, but with the spread wings. This is meaningful. Why does the writer compare the house with a nesting hen? You can imagine. Let me show the picture here. This is the stilt. Look, this, this house is on stilts, these wooden pillars. Many Tharu houses in Nepal have this kind of structure. Look here. This is the parts. This is the, this, look, the, 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 the bird is perching on this floating, uh, uh, floating wood. Okay. This is the hen, nesting hen, you can see in the picture, nesting hen. And the house is compared to the hen sitting over the eggs. And now you can imagine what she means, how the house developed these children, like, I remember how my childhood, it how in my childhood, the house sat on its stills. This was before it had a downstairs. It rested on its parts like a great blue bird, not a flying sort of bird, more like a nesting hen, but with spread wings. Grandfather had built, note down the people who are mentioned, had built past tense, it's soon after their marriage. So this house was built by grandfather and the granddaughter is writing about it. He was a painter, grandfather, and a house builder by trade. Grandfather was a poet. Grandfather was a meditative man by nature. recording <laughs> <laughs> So let's read. So he, her grandfather was a contractor, house builder, poet, meditative man by nature. As each of their eight children were born, oh God, now we know that grandfather had eight children. New rooms were added. Now we know why new rooms were added. As children were born, rooms were added. This is how the house grew. This is how the house is compared to the hen sitting on the eggs. After a few years, the paint did not exactly match because the first room had one paint. The eighth room was another paint. Now the materials so that there was a 
chronology to it, like the ring of a tree. See the simile. You will see in this essay, Koffer uses similes time and again. Like the ring of a tree, also a picture. And Mama could tell you the history of each room in her casa, a person's house or home, and thus the genealogy. So every room had a history. Jetho was born in one room. Milo might have been born in another room. Shilo might have been born in another room. Kailo might have been born in another room. Kailo might have been in another room. Thulo Kancho might have been born in another room. Kancho might have been born in another room. Every room has its history. Look how interesting the writing becomes. Look the imagination. Look the poetic presentation of the, the experience. So here I have the Nepali translation that I do usually to understand the essay before I prepare for the class. So here is the house on stilts. Here is the bird on porch. Here is another bird on the porch. She compares the house like this. Here is another hen. At one place, as you saw, she compares the house with the rings. Uh, in in, in uh, science of plants, each of these rings tells the year of the house. Sorry, year of the tree. See, this central ring tells first year of growth. And a wider ring tells rainy season, dry season. So just as the rings of a tree tell its age, the rooms of the house have a history. So let's read the comment on paragraph two. In paragraph two, the narrator explores the history of the house. The narrator compares her house with a nautilus in the first paragraph. Now she compares her house with the great blue bird. It's important that Kofar compares house with the bird. Why? Why blue bird? Because Kofar comes from an island, Puerto Rico. And you can imagine water all around and how she is bringing the island life in the essay. She compares the house with a nesting hen. With, this, is, this is such a warm poetic imagination. House compared to nesting hen. Just as a nesting hen gives its warmth to the eggs and uh, uh, produces eggs, rears children, in the same way, the house was like a parent. What meaning do you see in this comparison? A nesting hen sits on her eggs, hatches them, and protects the chicks. In what sense is the house like a nesting hen with spread wings? What part of house might look like wings? In what sense does a house hatch and protect life? In paragraph one, she told that the house had grown organically according to the needs of its inhabitants. In second paragraph, she says that as each of the eight children were born, new rooms were added to the house. How has the house grown organically? Look, why do you think the paint of each room did not exactly match? I want you to think about these questions as you read and listen to me. She again compares the rooms of the house with the rings of a tree. How is, it how is this comparison meaningful? What is the rhetorical strategy used in this paragraph? Is it analogy? Is it simile? Is it metaphor? In what sense is this strategy appropriate to convey the writer's meaning, which is expressed in first paragraph? Here are quiz questions you can try. I won't read them. So let's move to paragraph three. Her room is the heart of the house. Now, Kofar began by talking about the house. Now she is narrowing down her focus. From house, she focuses the room, her room. And she says that her means grandmother's room. Grandmother's room is the heart of the house. Now my question is, what is the connection of the heart with the house? Connotation, I mean. Look, she compares house with the heart. And as you read the essay, can you imagine in what sense 
a house can be hard and how a heart can be like a house. A heart has chambers. A heart has chambers. A house has chambers. A heart keeps the body living. A house keeps the people inside it living. If heart is destroyed, the body dies. If house is destroyed, people living in it die. So do you see, it is your house that gives you life. Just a minute. Hello? I got a phone call from my family. Sorry for this disturbance. So you can see, Kofar compares grandmother's room with the heart. And this comparison shows the significance of this room. And as you read down, you will see, she presents details about this room. She presents how her grandmother was the king or queen of this room. She was the monarch. She was the ruler. Her grandmother was the most powerful woman. And this metaphor is very significant. And I want you to think, imagine the connotation of a heart. In what sense heart is comparable to a room? What is the function of heart in the body? I want you to think. Though I have seen it, she writes, recently. Though I have seen it means room, recently. And both woman and room have diminished in size. Look, grandmother has become older. Grandmother has become older, leaner, thinner. And the house also has grown old. Changed by the new perspective of my eyes. Now, this is important. Here you see the story more room presents the viewpoint of a granddaughter. Here is a granddaughter. Judith Ortiz Koffer is a granddaughter, probably young. And she is visiting to her grandmother. So here we have the perspective of a granddaughter. And from this viewpoint of granddaughter, we are reading about grandmother. Changed by the new perspective of my eyes now. She says, baby, she says, I'm a small girl, young girl. As I look from at my grandma, I see her is small. Now capable of looking over countertops and tall beds in the house. There are countertops in the house. There are tall beds in the house. It is not this picture I carry in my memory of Mama's Casa. Look, Judith Otis Koffer is talking about three generations in the essay. She is talking about herself. She is talking about her mama. And she is talking about her grandmama. I carry, and, and she is carrying the memories of all these people in her heart. I carry in my memory of mama's kasa. I read again. Though I have seen this house recently, and both woman and room have diminished in size, changed by the new perspective of my eyes, now capable of looking over countertops and tall beds, it is not this picture I carry in my memory of mama's kasa. Now we ask question. If she is not carrying this picture, what picture is she carrying in her memory? And we'll read. Instead, I see her room as a queen's chamber. Now look, another simile, another comparison. She says that she sees her grandmother's room as a queen's chamber. So she sees her grandmother as a queen. It's very important that Judith Otis Koffer portrays a female figure as a queen. Now the question comes, if she was the queen, who was the king? Now here you have irony. Now you will see this essay contains irony. And we'll, I'll explain. I see a room as a queen's chamber. This simile is important. Where a small woman, look, small woman, see, it's the adjective is small. It's small. Small has denotative meaning. Denotatively, small is physically small. 
connotatively small might be powerless. Where a small woman loomed large. See the oxymoron. See the paradox. A small woman loomed large. The grandmother was small physically, but she was queen, loomed large. See this, this metaphor, loom. What looms? Dark clouds room in this loom in the sky. See the see this metaphor. She is portraying her grandmother like a big dark patch of cloud looming in the sky. A throne room. She says grandmother's room was like the throne room and her bed was the throne with a massive four poster bed. So do you see a remarkable thing? Judith Otis Coffer begins with a broader view the, of the house, then narrows it down to the room, then narrows it down to the throne, then narrows it down to the four poster bed in its center, which is to taller than a child's head. Coffer is being nostalgic and she remembers how probably she had visited this very room when she was a child and how when she visits this room again she recalls her memories of visiting the same room as a child when she could not look over the countertops when she could not look over the tall beds and now as she has grown young she can look over the countertops and she can look over the tall beds and how her perspective as a young girl as a writer has changed. So as you read and listen to me, I want you to imagine. It was on this bed where her own children had been born that the smallest grandchildren were allowed to take naps. Look the language. Were allowed. Why? Because the grandma was queen. She was the ruler. She was the queen of the house. It was on this bed. You see, Kofar began in paragraph one from the house and now narrowing down. She's zooming in. She's zooming in. First, she focuses on the house. Then she zooms into the room. Then she zooms into the uh, uh, bed, chamber. And now she gets in detail. It was on this bed where her own children had been born. In Nepali culture, we have a word called Muli Ochan, if you remember. And in every traditional Nepali house, Muli Ochan is the bed where every child in the family is born. And when women deliver, they are taken to this Muli Ochan. Do you have this Muli Ochan, the, 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 the central bed in your house where all children are born? See this tradition. It was on this bed where our own children had been born and the smallest grandchildren were allowed to take naps in the afternoon. Here too was where mama secluded herself to dispense private advice to her daughter. Now, in this third paragraph, Kofar used the metaphor of queen, used the simile of queen to compare her grandmother. And now she's describing in what sense the grandma was a queen. Look, grandma allowed to take naps. You could not get into the bed without her permission. Hmm? This was the place where she secluded herself to dispense private advice to her daughter. Look, whenever her daughters were in problem, they came to mother and she took them in this room she closed the door and she gave advice to their daughters about life. Sitting on the edge of the bed, looking down at whoever sat on the rocker where generations of babies had been swaying to sleep. Look how important. There was a rocker in the room and generations of babies had grown in that rocker. So do you see how Judith or this coffer creates an identity of the Margin. Koffer creates identity of the Puerto Rican people. See the image of the rocker. See the image of the bed. 
See the image of the house on its stilts. So do you see the paragraph is quite descriptive. It is not narrative like Changreli's essay. It is descriptive. Though she is telling a story, no doubt, Kofar is telling a story, but Kofar is like Changrili because just as Changrili goes in flashback and brings memories of his mother, Kofar is also going to flashback and bringing memories of the mother. So the similarity between Changrili and Kofar is that both of the writers use memory and both of the writers talk about their mother, a female figure. But the difference is that Kofar uses more imagination and more description and Changrili uses more narration. So let's read. It was on this bed where our own children had been born that the smallest grandchildren were allowed to take naps in the afternoons. Here too was where Mama secluded herself to dispense private advice to her daughters sitting on the edge of the bed. Do you see in these lines there is narration? Looking down at whoever sat on the rocker, wherever where, where generations of babies had been swinging to sleep. To me, she looked like a wise empress. Now pay attention. The simile, and I told you again, Kofar uses similes most of the times in this beautiful essay. To me, mother was like a wise empress. Above, she said, mother was queen. Now she says she was, this is ironical. Mother was not emperor. Mother was empress. So when you say mother was Rani, there was a Raja. Now who was the Raja? Grandfather was the Raja. And you will see later, she will tell the, the she will tell a lot about grandfather. So to me, she looked like a wise empress. Right out of the fairy tale, I was addicted to reading. So this paragraph three, let's wrap up the comment, presents the central character, grandmother in a beautiful way. And grandmother is portrayed as a queen living in a chamber and sitting on the throne. The bed is seen as throne, queen's throne, from where she gave advice to her children. And she is portrayed as an empress. But the irony is that if she is Rani, there is a Raja. And now you will see in the later paragraphs how was the Raja, how was the father, and how was the mother, and how the father, how Kofar portrays father. Let's move ahead. You record by Rashi. Okay, let's move ahead. So here you can see the countertop. I just brought a picture for you. And I just brought this picture from internet, from Google, just to present you. Like uh, I sometimes when I read this essay, I imagine that maybe her grandmother's room was like this. Not exactly, but this is the kind of sense that Kofar is bringing. Now you can see four poster bed. This is what a four poster bed looks like. You can imagine the bed. This is the rocking chair. So let's read the commentary in paragraph three. In the first paragraph, Kofor talks about the house as a whole. In the second paragraph, Kofor talks about the rooms. In the third paragraph, Kofor focuses on a particular room, her grandmother's room. She zooms into her grandmother's bed. She compares her grandmother's room with a human heart. She compares her grandmother with a queen and her bed with the throne. In the rest of the paragraph, she shows with vivid details in what sense the room functions as a heart. Can you explain how realistic this comparison is? She also compares her grandmother with the room and says both have diminished in size. How does this help you understand the organic growth of the house? In what sense can a room diminish in size? Maybe because the people living there have left the house? The narrator says 
that the perspective of her eyes had changed. And now she is capable of looking over the countertops and tall beds. She says that she carries a different picture of her grandmother's casa. Why this is so? No. When she visited grandmother's house as a child long ago, she was a small child and she did not understand many things of life. She did not understand patriarchy. She did not understand the situation of women. Now, as a young girl, she understands so many things about men, women, male, female, relation, power in the family. And now, when she is visiting her grandmother's room second time as a young girl, she understands those things which she didn't understand when she visited the same room as a child. What, in your view, I'm asking you, dear students, has enabled her to come up with this new perspective of her grandmother's room? What is this new perspective? Maybe Kofar got educated. Maybe Kofar learned about feminism. Maybe Kofar learned about female rights, women's rights. The narrator calls her grandmother's room Queen's Chamber. The bed she calls a throne. And her grandmother, a wise empress, not only empress, wise empress, out of fairy tale. How is this metaphor of throne appropriate? How is this ironical? When you call someone empress, you still imply that they are not emperors. When you call a woman empress, you mean that she is under the rule of the king. This is ironical. What does it imply? What rhetorical strategies do you perceive employed in this paragraph? I have these questions, dear student. I don't have an answer. And I want you to imagine and write in your copy as you listen to me. What proof do you see, ethical, logical, or emotional? So I see more emotional appeal in this paragraph. So in this sense, Koffer is nearer to Sangrili. And if I compare Judith Otis Koffer with uh, 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 the second writer, uh, uh, N. Fadiman, if I compare N. Fadiman, you can see the difference. So Koffer is more like Sangrili and not like Fadiman. Fadiman makes ethical appeal. Fadiman makes logical appeal. Fadiman brings a lot of references, scholarly references. And Fadiman writes in argumentative mode, whereas Koffer writes in narrative mode, writes in descriptive mode, and Koffer brings a lot of metaphors and similes. And so Koffer makes emotional appeal. When I say Judith Otis Koffer makes emotional appeal, please understand that those writers who make emotional appeal, they depend more on language because ethos is created through language. Ethos is created when language is used emotively. Ethos is created when language is used with literary style. Ethos is created when a writer uses language to create emotions in the reader. And in this essay, more room, as you can see, the similes, the metaphors, the analogies, the descriptive writing, the vivid imagery of the house, it is all that is creating emotional appeal. So this essay is closer to Sangrili's essay, and this essay is distant from Hadiman's essay. What emotions does uh, Kofar stir and how? I want you to imagine. What is the tone in this paragraph? I don't have an answer. What is the tone in Hadiman's essay? You will see Hadiman's essay is objective. You will see Hadiman's essay uh, uh, is more scholarly. So the tone is uh, the tone in Fadiman's essay is factual. Fadiman, whenever Fadiman says anything, instantly Fadiman refers to a scholarly source to back up what he's saying. But Sangrili doesn't do that. Uh, Kofor doesn't do that. Why? Because Fadiman's tone is matter of a fact tone, whereas uh, 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 Kofor's tone is not matter of fact tone. Kofor's tone is more emotional, right? Let's move to paragraph four. Though the room was dominated by the mahogany four posters, 
Now you will see Kofar gets zooms in further, giving us detailed painting. It, it seems as, as we read the essay, it seems we are not reading the essay, we are watching a movie. See, Kofar creates vivid picture using words. Though the room was dominated by the mahogany four poster. Look, she was a wise empress. She was a queen. See the description. Mahogany is the most expensive furniture. Though the room was dominated by the mahogany four posters, it also contained all of Mama's symbols of power. Pay attention to narrative mode here because Kofar is using past tense. And pay attention to vivid details. So you see a combination of description and narration here. It also contained all of Mama's symbols of power. This is remarkable. Please note down and pay attention to the expression Mama's symbols of power. Because in this essay, what Judith Ortiz Koffer does is, Judith Ortiz Koffer shows why women should be powerful and how women can be powerful and why women are powerless. So in a sense, this essay is a feminist essay. This essay has an agenda, feminist agenda. This essay talks about women's empowerment. This essay talks about women's exploitation. So right in para four, Judith Ortiz Koffer brings her political motif, Mama's symbols of power. On her dresser, instead of cosmetics, there were jars filled with herbs. Now, girls in my class, even boys in my class, who are listening to me, watching my video. Now, look, what is what is Koffer saying? If you girls bring cosmetics in your room and you try to be beautiful, what will happen? You'll be weaker. You'll be powerless. Because for whom are you being beautiful? You are being beautiful for a man. And when you become beautiful, there is a man who is ruling over you. So don't bring cosmetics. Bring jars filled with herbs. Why? Because when you become a doctor, you treat patients. And when you treat patients, people respect you. So as a woman, as a girl, do something that makes you more powerful. Don't do something that makes you more beautiful. Women do not become powerful when they try to look beautiful. Women can become powerful when they earn money. Women become powerful when they become independent. This is Kofor's argument. Now, I want you, the students, to imagine and think what is your take on this argument. On her dresser, instead of cosmetics, there were jars filled with herbs. What herbs? Yerba Buena. Now, this essay is in a course that is titled Voices from the Margin. In what sense the essay more room bring voices from the margin? So do you see these herbs, they come from Puerto Rican society. These herbs come from Puerto Rican culture, and they have Spanish names, Yerba Buena, Yerba Mala. Ask a question, why does Kofar use Spanish names? Why does Kofar not translate these names into English and give uh, English words to the reader? Probably Kofar is encouraging, persuading, forcing her readers to look into a dictionary or to, to, to know about the Spanish identity. So I'll say, by bringing these Spanish words, Yerba Buena and Yerba Mala, Kofar is also asserting the Puerto Rican identity. She's asserting the ethnic identity. This is how this essay brings the voices of the mar margins. On her dresser, instead of cosmetics, there were jars filled with herbs, Yerba Buena, Yerba Mala. Spanish meaning good herbs, bad grass. Yerba buena, yerba mala. I love this Spanish language. As I pronounce Spanish words loudly, I feel the poetic quality in Spanish language. Yerba buena, yerba mala. The making of purgatives. What is purgative? Purgative is a medicine that is that has strongly laxative effect. If you have constipation. If you have constipation and if you eat these herbs, your constipation is cured. Look, grandmother was a herbalist and teas 
to which we were all subjected during childhood crisis. Whenever in our childhood we fell sick, whenever we had health problem, our mother will give us yerba buena and yerba mala. She will make us eat some herb. She will make us eat some bad grass. She will make us drink some tea and we'll get fine. Look, then can you see the traditional knowledge that this grandmother had? Imagine how our traditional knowledge is getting lost these days. I somewhere read that the Tharu people in Nepal have a lot of traditional knowledge of herbal medicine and that traditional knowledge of medicine is being lost as our society is changing. She had a steaming cup in a room for anyone who could not or would not get up to face life on any given day. Oh God, if you were lazy, if you didn't get up early on time, then she would punish you with this steaming cup. Now we will read in detail later what is this steaming cup and how this queen uh, administered her punishment. If the acrid, unpleasantly bitter pungent after test of her cures for malingering, uh, uh, malingering did not get you out of bed, then it was time to call L doctor. Now look the language. Let me check the meaning. What is acrid? Unpleasantly bitter or pungent. Her medicine, her herbs. What is malingering? Intentional production of false or grossly exaggerated physical or psychological symptoms motivated by external incentives such as avoiding duty work. Look how funny. Huh? What is humor? Look, there is humor. If a child was pretending to be sick, then grandmother will make him eat these bitter herbs. And when you have to eat bitter herbs, you just express the truth. You are no more sick. You are no more sick. So if you didn't get up from the bed, if you did not get up from the bed, you had to eat this herb. And uh, if you didn't get up from the bed, she will call a doctor. Look, in what sense she was empress, in what sense she was a ruler. So in para four, she says that grandmother's room contained many symbols of the power. What are these objects in a room? In what way do these objects signify her grandmother's power? The paragraph gives details of how her grandmother exercised her power. How did she exercise her power? The previous paragraph used the metaphor of throne and the empress. This paragraph gives details of how her mother was like a wise empress. Let's move to paragraph five. And there was the monstrous Chiforo or Shiforo. She kept locked with a little golden key she did not hide. If you're Nepali and if you come from village, if you check back in your home, in your grandmother's room, there is something called mudus, a wooden box a box made of wood and our grandmothers kept all their valuables in that box. So, Shiforo is this kind of wooden box, let's say, like the modern, what do you call, modern women have uh, a box where they keep cosmetics, I don't know what you call, I just, I'm not getting the word. And there was the monstrous Shiforo she kept locked with a little golden key she did not hide. Look, she had the key and interestingly, she locked the box, but she did not hide the key. This is interesting. This was a test of her dominion over us. Look, she was the queen. She was the ruler. She would not hide the key and nobody dared to open the box, although the key was there because everybody accepted grandmother's rule as the queen. This was a test of her dominion over us, though my cousins and I wanted a look inside that massive wardrobe. More than anything, we never reached for the little key lying on top of our Bible on the dresser. This is more interesting. Here we have 
narrative mode because kofar is telling a story she is remembering and telling about grandmother this imagery of bible this reference of bible is important because she kept the key on the bible and it has a very deeper meaning because bible teaches morality bible teaches that you should not do sinful things and stealing the key and opening the lock will be a sin so when you try to pick up the key you saw the bible and when you saw the bible you remembered god's commandments then you dissuaded from opening the box look grandmother's technique to control children and here you can see that this grandmother was the wisest woman under the sun and by portraying her grandmother like this what is kofar doing judith what is kofar is portraying women as wise and intelligent creatures not as beautiful this is very important it's very important to attention judith what is kofar portrays this woman as an intelligent being not as beautiful being and you should keep in mind okay this was a test of our dominion over us though my cousins and i wanted a look inside that massive wardrobe more than anything we never reached for that little key lying on top of our bible on the dresser so do you see how grandmother ruled over our country our house how wise she was so women are wiser but do you see in literature generally women are not portrayed as wise creatures they are rather portrayed as glamorous sexy creatures and kofar here doesn't present women as something sexy something romantic something glamorous she portrays women as some some as, as intelligent people this was also where she placed her earrings on the bible and rosary at night rosary is a bead a string of beads that you use like mala at night look the grandmother had all these accessories so this grandmother looks like a modern woman from fashion television channel this was also where she placed her ear rings and rosary at night god's word was her security system because she kept all these things in the bible so nobody would steal this sifaro see the imagery vivid imagery in this paragraph number 5 the imagery of the sifaro is at the center of this 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 paragraph description and uh, this sifaro is a symbol of power this sifaro is a metaphor for power because the bible was on the sifaro and the keys were on the bible the ring ear rings were on the bible the rosary was on the bible everything was on the bible bible was on the sifaro on the sifaro in the room so sifaro of the bible is the symbol of power this sifaro was the place where i imagined she kept jewels i imagined because she had never seen she kept jewels satin slippers look queen her grandmother was queen she wore not ordinary slippers satin slippers you google and look the images and you will be surprised to see these pictures an elegant sequined uh, satin slippers and and elegant sequined silk gowns of heart breaking finesse look she was a queen not an ordinary woman i lusted after those imaginary costumes now we don't know if grandmother really had these things but kofar as a child as a child she imagined see the curiosity see the suspense see the mystery that kofar is creating kofar is remembering how she saw this this kofar uh, this 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 box sifaro and how she imagined i had uh, i had heard that mama had been a great beauty in her youth and the bell of many balls look this is humorous she imagines that she had heard that when grandmother was young she was a very sexy woman she was a very beautiful woman glamorous woman many boys fell in love with her 
look this description. So what do you see? Kufar is presenting women as powerful characters. Okay. Most beautiful and popular woman at a, at a dance. Bell of many balls means ball is a dance. So she was a popular dancer. My cousins had other ideas as to what she kept in that wooden ball. Look, the imagery of ball. What is a vault? You see vault in bank. Banks have vault. And vaults and banks are kept in the central room. They are locked. And vaults contain billions of rupees. Vaults stands for prosperity, richness. Its secret could not be money. Mama did not hand cash to strangers. Banks were out of the question. So there were stories that her mattress was stuffed with dollar pills. Look, there were stories. This is this. I love this fifth paragraph. Why? Because when I was a child, I went to my mama's house and I met my grandmother. Now, as I read this story, and I as I read Koffer portraying her grandmother, I remember my grandmother. And as I read about Koffer's grandmother Shifuro, I remember my grandmother's mudus in my mama's house. So there were stories that her mattress was stuffed with dollar pills, bills and that she buried coins in jars in her garden under rose bushes or kept them in her inviolate shifur. So do you see a remarkable thing in this paragraph? There is poetic imagination in this paragraph. Look how much she imagines, how much Kofar imagines. There might be that legendary gun. They might be. See the imagination. As a child, when Kofar went in this room, or when she had to stay outside and look inside the room, she imagined there was a gun salvaged from the Spanish-American conflict over the island. We went over. Look, Kofar is bringing the history of Puerto Rico, how America took over Puerto Rico from Spain, and how she imagines this gun was brought from this conflict. So do you see how she is portraying the identity of the margin. We went over suspected treasures that we made up simply because children have to fill locked trunks with something wonderful. Whenever children see locked boxes, they imagine. So here I brought a Google picture just to make you help you imagine the meaning of this paragraph. This is a shifrobe or wardrobe. So shifrobe is uh, wardrobe where you keep your clothes. And I just brought this picture to help you imagine. This is another picture, wardrobe. Dress up. This is the ro ro rosary. Christians have this uh, bead, uh, beads in a string. They, I don't know, they are like Hindus. Mala, you, show, you see this Mala Japni, recite your names. These are the uh, satins. Look. I just brought these images. This is elegant sequined dress. And Kofar imagines all this dress. It's not that. This is a silk gown. Look how much as a child she imagines. So let's read the commentary in paragraph 5. In this paragraph, the narrator describes her grandmother's wardrobe and mystery surrounding the wardrobe. As a child, she imagines that this wardrobe is stuffed with her valuables, money, and other treasures. The description draws a very mysterious picture of her grandmother. The Bible or the dresser exerted religion, dominion over children. So you see, uh, Kofar shows how religion was used to exercise power over children. Let's move to paragraph 6. On the wall above the bed hung a heavy silver crucifix. So in this essay, note down that Judith Otis Koffer gives us a minute description of the various objects that her grandmother had. And these objects show the power of the grandmother. On the wall above the bed hung a heavy silver crucifix, cross, silver cross. Christ's agonized head hung directly over Mama's pillow. I avoided looking at this weapon. Look, look this attire. 
Look the satire. Kofar makes a satire how religion was used as a means to dominate over people. How the cross was used by grandmother to terrify children and dissuade them from doing anything sinful. I avoided looking at this weapon suspended over where her head would lay and on the rare occasions when I was allowed to sleep on the bed, I scooted down to the safe middle of the mattress. See the imagery. I scooted down. How do you sleep? You, you just Google and see the picture. You're scooting it, you sleep. You sleep. Your hand is uh, against your chest and your uh, feet are against your stomach. I scooted down to the safe middle of the mattress where her body's impression took me in like a mother's lap. This is the most emotional line in the essay. I'll say in Nepali, though I don't want to speak Nepali. Mo Bhaima Gundrima Sutte, Hajurama Mathi Kharma Sutno Hundio, Ani Hajurama Ko Chaya, Tala Gundrima Mamathi Portio, Ani Mo Kalpana Garthe, Ki Mo Chai Hajurama Ko Kakma, Surakshit Sath Suti Ragesu. See the imagination. Look how poetic the essay is. This essay is very emotional, very poetic. When I was allowed to sleep on the bed, I scooted down to the safe middle of the mattress where her body's impression took me in like a mother's lap. Having taken care of the obligatory religious decoration with the crucifix, Mama covered the Yoris, the New Yorkers, in first essay we read about the magazine, the New Yorkers. Mama covered the, uh, sorry, the mama covered the walls with objects sent to her over the years by her children in the streets. Los Nueva Yours, the New Yorkers. So sorry, I made a mistake. Her children had gone to New York City. Earlier we read that this house was growing small. Earlier we read that mama's house was growing small. Now we understand. Look the emotional appeal. The house was big when all children were living in this house. The house became small because all children left the house. Oh God, now I can relate this essay with Sangrili's essay. Los Nueva Yours, see the Spanish expression, the New Yorkers were represented by, among other things, a postcard of Niagara Falls. Look how emotional. Maybe some sons, some children, some child had gone to New York and he had gone to Canada. He had gone to Niagara Fall. He had sent a poster and Mama had this poster in the room. From our son, Harnan, postmarked Buffalo and why. There was a stamp of the post office, Buffalo and why. In a conspicuous gold frame hung a large color photograph of her daughter, Nena, her husband and their five children at the entrance to Disneyland in California. This line is very, this paragraph is very emotional because you know, today no one is in their house, only pictures are there. This, this paragraph portrays Nepali situation today. In many Nepali houses today, if you go, you will see photographs hanging on the wall and you won't see people in the house. The picture, the people are on the, uh, the members, the family members are only in the photo. And they are in foreign country. They are, they are in Malaysia, Saudi, Qatar. From us, she had gotten a black lace fan. Look, from us means from Kofar. From us, she had gotten how emotional line. All daughters gave her, gave her gifts and those gifts were there. From us, she had gotten a black lace fan. Father had brought it to her from a tour of duty with the Navy in Europe. On Sundays, she would remove it from its hook on the wall to fan herself at Sunday Mass. Each year, more items were added as the family grew and dispersed. This is ironical. More items were added because more people left the family. Look, people left the family and went to foreign country and they gifted her items. So items were added because people left the family. Oh God, how ironical. 
and how realistic. And every object in the room had a story attached to it. A uh, queto, which mama would bestow on anyone who received the privilege of a day alone with her. It was almost worth pretending to be sick. Though, why, why it was worth pretending to be sick? Because if you could pretend being sick, you had a chance to get into mama's room. You had a chance to see the things in mama's room. Though the bitter herb purgatives of the body were a big price to pay for the spirit revivals of our storytelling. Now, this is interesting, you know. Look how emotional appeal she, Judith Ortiz Koffer makes. She's writing that whenever we wanted to see Mama, we would pretend that we were sick because Mama did not allow us inside room unless we were sick. And when we pretended that we were sick just to get in the room and look Mama and things, then we had to drink their prajeti. I want to read this Nepali translation actually. I feel like reading. I should read. I shouldn't tell in Nepali, but sorry. Excuse me. I want to read this translation. Ama ko ochan mati tera ko bitta ko chan bitta ma chandi ke uta garungu khal ko isa masiyo ko suli jundiye ko thiyo. Chandi ko tes suli baata Jesus Christ ko pida ekta anwar bhai ko tau ko ama ko shirani ko sida mati patti jundiye ko onthiyo. Ma ama ko tau ko one thau ko sida mati jundiye ko tes hathiyar tera akha laundi na the. Ra kahile kahin jab malai आमा को छान में सुत्ते मौका मिलती हो मौ खुशुक का ताला को गुंदरी को बीज को सुरक्षित ठाव में और लिंथ है जहां माथी खाट में सुती रह के आमा को शरीर को छाया ले मलाई आमा ले आपने काख में चैपे जस्तो लागत है ईसा मसीह को सूली लाई सिंगार पटार करने आपने धार्मिक दायित्व पूरा गरीब से के पची आमा ले कोठा को और भित्ता आरु अमेरिका में रहेका उनका बच्चा आरु ले बरसों में देखिए पटाए को एवं न सामान आरु ले भरनु भाई को उन्हें आमा को कोठा को भित्ता आरु में न्यूयॉर्क का बासिंदा आरु लाई औरु चीज आरु भाई उनको छोरो हरनान ले पढ़ाए को नियाग्रा झरना को तस्वीर भाई को पोस्टकार्ड ले दर्शाये को उन्हें जस्मा बफेलो न्यूयॉर्क बनेरा हुला को टांचा लगाये को उन्हें सर लंगे देखीने सुनो वो फ्रेम में उनको छोरी नैना उनको लोगने रा उन्हीं औरों का पांच जना बच्चा बच्ची औरों कैलिफोर्निया में डिज्नीलैंड को प्रवेश द्वार में उभिए को छुलो रंगीन तस्वीर झुंडिए को थियो हमी औरों ले आमा लाई कालो रंग को डोरी ले बुने को जालीदार पंखा दिए कर थियो यो पंखा बुवाले यूरोप में जल सेना में आपनों पलटन में जाना के लेवनु भाई को थियो पर आमाले यो जाली बने को पंखा हर एक आयतवार का दिन पिता को किला बाड़ा झिकेरा प्रार्थना करने बेला में प्रयोग करने में थियो हर एक बरसा परिवार का सदस्य थप्पड़ दे और विभिन्न ठामा सर्दे जाना केरी ऐसे ने और विभिन्न सामान रू थप्पड़ जानते र कोठा में भाई को हर एक सामान संग ये उटा कथा जोड़ी को उन्हें ये उटा यश तो किस्सा जोन आमाले उनको कोठा में उन्हीं संग दिन भरी एकले गफ़िदे बसने सौभाग्य प्राप्त करने जो कोई लाई पनी शनावनु उन्हें आमा का कहानी हरु ब्रामी भाई को बहाना पारी रा भाई पनी सुन्दर लायक थिए भले आमाले निको पारने फोने पखाला चलाया रा पेट सफा पारने जड़े बुटी को तीतो न तीतो स्वाद ती कथा हरु सुने रा अपना जोश रा उत्साह पुनर जागृत करने का लागे चुकाऊनु पानी ठुलो मूल्य किन्ह होस लुक हाउ ब्यूटीफुल दिस स्टोरी इज एंड आई कुड़नॉट � she calls this crucifix a weapon that her mother used to exert dominion over children of the family. As her family grew and dispersed, more items were added to the collection. Each of these objects has a story of its own. And to me, this paragraph number five, six is very emotional. Paragraph seven. Mama slept alone on her uh, large bed. Mama slept alone on her large bed except for the times when a sick grandchild warranted the privilege. This is remarkable. There is something called ex uh, building expectations. Writers build expectations in readers as they write. And 
either those expectations are fulfilled or those expectations are broken. Here, Kofar says that Mama slept alone and she was queen. Now we wonder, why did she sleep alone? Why would a queen sleep alone? And this is a mystery in paragraph 7 that she will solve later on. And this is very important because this reveals one important theme or agenda or idea of this essay. It, it is this that makes this essay a feminist essay. Mama slept alone on her large bed except for the times when a sick grandchild warranted the privilege or when a heartbroken daughter came home in need of more than herbal teas. In the family, there is a story about how this came to be. Look, when a child needed more than herbal teas, look, the daughters were mad away. And many times daughters had some problem in their home. And whenever the daughters had some issues or problems in their family, daughters would come to Maiti and they will meet their mother and they will share their problem with the mother. And the mother will advise them how to solve their problems. Look, the mother was a wise lady. So comment on paragraph 7. This paragraph focuses on grandmother's large bed. She rules her world from this bed. We come to know that she sleeps alone on her large bed. The next paragraph will reveal this mystery. Paragraph 8. When one of the daughters, my mother, or one of her sisters tells the cuento, cuento means story, and you will see that in many places in the story, Judith Otis Koffer uses a Spanish word at a very important location. Look, Koffer doesn't tell, Koffer doesn't use the word story. This story is written in, in Spanish. I don't know if this is translation. I guess Koffer wrote this story in English originally. But ask a question. Why does Judith Otis Koffer use the word, Spanish word, cuento and not story? One answer comes. It is through this use of Spanish terminology that Koffer is presenting her voice of the margin and presenting her identity of the ethnic people, Puerto Rican identity by bringing language. Because identity is asserted either through language or through dress or through food. Sangrili in his essay, Coming Home Again, asserts Korean identity through food. Judith Otis, uh, Otis Koffer in her essay, Morum, asserts Puerto Rican identity through language and through the description of her mother. So do you see one similarity between Sangrili's essay, Coming Home Again, and, uh, uh, and uh, 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 this essay, More Room, by Judith Otis Koffer? Both of them are talking about a female figure, and both of them are creating their ethnic identity, their marginalized identity through this figure. And uh, Changrili also presents his mother as a powerful figure, and Kofra also presents her grandmother as a powerful figure. When one of the daughters, my mother, or one of her sisters tells the cuento of how Mama came to own her nights. Look, own her nights. This is a very remarkable phrase. Owning her night. Look, previously, Mama did not own her night. This is remarkable. And please pay attention in this essay. This, this is a very political expression. Women do not own their night. Who owns women's night? The man owns women's night. Because the man keeps women in his arms. The man has sex with the woman. The man uses woman's body. The man exploits woman's body. The man, the man eats woman's body. The man consumes woman's body. The man, the, the woman's body is a food for the man. The woman doesn't own her body. Owner nights. It is usually preceded by the qualifications that Papa's exile from his wife's room was not a result of animosity between the couple, but that the act had been Mama's famous bloodless coup for her personal freedom. So here you see humor. Here you see humor. 
very strong humor. Here you see something funny. I don't know the literary term I should use for this kind of thing. Sorry, I don't know this literary word. I wish I knew. But it's very clear. See this picture. Papa was exiled from wife's room. Why? Because mama had bloodless coup. And look, from the very beginning, Kofar had been portraying grandmother as a queen, as empress. So kings, rulers have coup for her personal freedom. And it is this line, please, boys and girls, dear students, pay attention. See the word freedom, personal freedom. Kofar, sometimes I think, is Kofar saying, hello, women, you will never be free unless you become free from the men. I don't know. Papa was the benevolent dictator of her body and her life who had had to be banished from her bed so that mama could better serve her family. Please underline this line, circle this line, stop reading further, think seriously what this line is saying. I read again. Mama's famous bloodless coup for her personal freedom. And there is some news. Amale, Afnis, even Kurachako lagi, Parivar Kulagi, Gualai, Kotavara, Nikal Nupari Bayo, Kinavane, Guasai, Usko, Amako, Sarirko, Tanasaruntu, Guale, Hitler, Rejeste, Amako, Sarir Mathis Sasan Goruntu, Kasil Sasan Goruntu, Sambo Gorera, Savas Gorera, Borse Bitsa Amale Pit Bokara, Bauko, Guacore Kamuntu, Amalai, Bataki, Mahvanola, Sutayale. Mahgarnola is of the Kulagi, Maljaros of the Prigare. Guale, Amale, Badagi, Orukani Kamna Pone, Sex Gorialli, Samba Sampar Gorialli, Rajalipin Amale Bacha Bokayali, Ramale Bursai Bitsi Bacha Pound Perne. Bacha Pounda Pounda, Amak Halat Karaboy, Amale Buzinboy, Kabopini, Yumer Lognelai, Mole, Bistarabara Nikali, Nevanil Tamarata, Marne Bellasam, Bachis and Mount Lagonsa. An Amale Gernuva, Bidro Hogarnuva, Bloodless Kugarnuva. And a coil of head benevolent dictator, and it's cost funny, cost ironical, cost satirical remarks. Go for the Hazubala came on a benevolent dictator of her body. Benevolent kina, Hazramala Kanadine, Launadine, dictator kina, Badlama, Hazrama Seriko, Sosan Garne. Kanadine, Launadine, the Jeevan go Sosan Garne. Logan early, Mela early, Kanadinson, Launadinson, the Sosan Garson. Ernesto, Evara, Mile Arle, Logan or Lai, Esto, Sosan, Garandino, Udena, Mile Arle, Logan or Lai, Afno, Sherilco, Sosan, Garandino, Udena. Look, <laughs> what a meaningful. Had to be banished from her bed so that Mama could better serve her family. Never the Kamina Pony, Basi visited to Bogagasa, no man paid Bokyo, Persutkiriba. Before the telling, we had to, sorry for this Nepali. Before the telling, we had to agree that the old man was not to blame. We all recognize that in the family, Papa was an alma de Dios. Again, Spanish phrase. Alma de Dios means a soul of God. Look how the patriarch is portrayed. Traditional parivarma, Logan Manchik Stan Kyunsa. Logan Manchik say, God in the parivarma. A soul of God. A saintly soft spoken presence whose soft spoken. Kasalpin Parivarma, Guaco Barima, Chorcono Bulli. Tadia Vera no Avrukino Bulli. A soft spoken presence whose main pressure, whose, whose main pleasures in life, such as writing poetry and reading the Spanish large type editions of Reader's Digest, always. Sorry, just a minute. Always took place outside the vortex of Mama's. This is a tap. You bang yo. Hajibal Karin to two bullish as well. By the Anna Basara, Kavita Pada Bosun. And you can get you, Hajamala Pata Bokone. A Bogna Amalipur, Bold the Bogna Purin. And say, there is a language, the vortex, vortex cue. Jansan Sar, Sabukum Chincha. It was not his fault, after all. That every year or so he planted a baby seed in Mama's fertile body, keeping her from leading her, leading the active life she needed and desired. He loved her and the babies. She's the irony. She's the irony. He loved her. Kiko love. Love. Hazrubuako love kethio. Pet bokamni. Hazrubale 
हजर आम असाध मया कर कसरी पेट बोका वर्ष पीछे पापा कंपोज ओड्स हजरबा को फिगर के बड़ा सटारिकल यहाँ ये हजरबा को पोर्ट्रेल बड़ा सटारिकल पापा कंपेयर कंपोज ओड्स एंड लिरिक्स टू सेलिब्रेट बर्थ्स एंड एनिवर्सरीज एंड हायर्ड म्यूजिशियस टू अकंपनी हिम इन सिंगिंग दैम टू हिज फैमिली एंड फ्रेंड्स एट एक्स्ट्रा वैगन पिग रोड्स एंड थ्रू पार इयरली गॉड हर एक वर्ष बच्चा झनमे हजार भोज दिने गाँव बड़ी बोला खुआने सुंगुर भुटर खुआने मसु खुआने रक्सी खुआने म्यूज मैं म्यूजिक बजा बोलाने अब गाड़ो को लाई आमा बोक्न तो आमा पर्यन जन्म तो आमा पर्यन अपा के बसो गीत गा दिन भरी बेलका आमा पेट बोका भाई मामा एंड द ओल्डेस्ट गर्ल्स वर्क फर डेज प्रिपेरिंग द फूड काम कल आमा गाना गाने हजर बुआ ने काम कर हजर आमा मामा एंड द ओल्डेस्ट गर्ल्स वर्क फर डेज प्रिपेरिंग द फूड पापा सैड फर आवर्स इन इज पेन्टर सेट पापा हजर बुआ लाई अल्सो अल्सो इज स्टडी एंड लाइब्रेरी कंपोजिंग द संग्स एट दीज सेलिब्रेशन ही वॉज अल्सो नोन टू गिव लंग स्पीचेस इन प्रेज अफ गॉड हिज फेकंड वाइफ लुक सेटार हेन हजर बुआ ने भगवान धन्यवाद दें ओहो मेरे श्रीमती कस्ती फेकंड वर्ष बीस पाई रह हिज फेकंड वाइफ एंड हिज यू के हो ये मैं अरला यो ना एंड इज बिलेबेड आइलैंड अब यहाँ आब दाँच घर कसरी वर्ष बीस ग्रो भैर थी रसरी नटिलस दाँदी एज अ मिडल एज अ मिडल यो एस में चाहिए चांग्रिली को एस में जो आमा को फिगर रुड रिचन लाई फ्रेमिंग डिभाइस बनाए जस्ते यहाँ तो घर र नटिलस के पिक्चर छो फ्रेमिंग डिभाइस हो क्योंकि थ्रू आउट देश तो पूरा घर पूरे कुरा घर लटिलस दाजे रसरी नटिलस के चेम्बर हो घर को रूम छ जसरी नटिलस ग्रो हो घर ग्रो हो जसरी नटिलस सीधे हड्डी बाइक के रहें अलग यहाँ हजरामा को घर में कोठा बाइक कहीं बाकी छेन सरी फतीस नेपाली आर दी सेलिब्रेशन ही वॉज अल्सो नोन टू गिव लंग स्पीचेस इन प्रेज अफ गॉड हिज फेकंड वाइफ एंड हिज बिलेबेड आइलैंड एज अ मिडिल चाइल्ड माई मदर एज अ मिडिल चाइल्ड माई मदर जुडिथ ओर्टिज कफर्स मदर वॉज अ मिडिल चाइल्ड रिमेम्बर्स दीज अकेजन्स एज अ टाइम वेन द वेमेन सैट इन द किचन एंड लैमेन्टेड देयर बर्ड इन लुक महिला रुन थे बच्चा बोक्न पे काम कर वाइल द मेन फिस्टेड आउट इन दैसियो हे लोग्ने मैं पिने बस हा 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 कर गी नाच्ने खाने मोज रक्सी खाने मोज बस्ती करने महिला काम करने दिस पाराग्राफ ब्यूटिफुली पोट्रेज दी 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 एक्सपर्टेशन एंड इन जस्ट वुमेन इन पोलिटिकल लाइफ दिस इज हाउ जुडिथ ओट इज कफर एज अ वुमन प्रेजेंट्स द भोइस अफ द मार्जिन देर रम थिक एंड भोइस राइजिंग इन सॉन्ग एंड प्रेज फर इच अदर कम पैनरोज कंपेनियस अल हे लोग्ने मैं रक्सी खा रि नाचने गाने महिला काम करने हर ग्रैंड मदर केम टू ओन हर नाइट दिस मीन्स अर्लियर हर मदर वॉज नट फ्री एट नाइट वाई वी अल्सो कम टू नो दैट मामा हेड टू रिवोल्ट अगेन्स्ट पापा फर हर पर्सनल फ्रीडम How did she revolt? She says that Grand Papa was a benevolent dictator of her grandmother's body and her life. In this paragraph, the narrator portrays a typical character of her grandmother. What kind of person was he? She calls him a soul of God. Is this ironical? Why does the narrator think that it was not grandfather's fault that grandmother became pregnant every year? What might have been the burden? For which the women lamented. How does the narrator portray men in this paragraph? What does it tell about women's situation? Paragraph nine. It was after the birth of her eighth child, eighth child. After she had lost three at birth. Oh God! It was after the birth of her eighth child, eighth child. After she had lost three children at birth or in infancy. That mama made her decision. 
Now I remember my mother as I read this line and make the video for you. My mother gave birth to 11 children and I am the oldest and my brother is the youngest and nine children died. So when I read this essay by Judith Otis Koffer, I relate myself to Koffer and I remember my mother and my father. They say that mama had had a special way of letting her husband know that they were expecting a child. One that had begun when at the beginning of their marriage, he had built her a house too confining for her taste. So when she discovered her first pregnancy, she supposedly drew plans for another room, which he dutifully executed. Every time a child was due, she would demand more space, more space. Now, reading this line, I remember Virginia Woolf's essay, A Room of One's Own. Please, dear students, I request you read Virginia Woolf's essay, A Room of One's Own, where Virginia Woolf argues that women need space, their own space and freedom. And I would also request you to read this essay and compare it with with Virginia Woolf's essay. And also read another, another story, The Revolt of a Mother. There is a story, I forgot the title, uh, author, The Revolt of a Mother. In that story also, the father begets so many children and makes house for animals, not for children. So you can, really, you can read the story, The Revolt of a Mother, and Woolf's essay was once on room, and this, this is story. She would demand more space, more space. See the humor. Papa acceded to her wishes. Child after child, since he had learned early that Mama's renowned temper was a thing that grew like a monster along with a new belly. Oh God. As Mama's belly grew, Mama began to lose her temper. See that is humor and, and real. Mama's renowned temper. Mama was famous for her anger. And she became more angry if she, as her belly increased. Maybe you have irritation. You have a son of 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 a son. Mama's renowned temper was a thing that grew like a monster. See the simile. You have a son of a son of a son of a son of a son. Like a monster along with a new belly. In this way, Mama got the house that she wanted. But with each child, she lost in heart and energy. See the irony. Irony, sir. Mama got the house when sir. Basta ma, Mama lost the house. Because to get one more room, she had to get one more baby. She had knowledge of her body. She had knowledge of her body and perceived that if she had any more children, her dreams and her plans would have to be permanently forgotten because she would be a chronically ill woman like Flora with her 12 children, asthma, no teeth in bed, more than on her feet. Look, Mama knew. Oh God, how beautiful. But of 10. And so after my youngest uncle was born, she asked Papa to build a large room at the back of the house. He did so in joyful anticipation that a new humor is not. I will say, Love Buddha, Naya Kotabano, Naya Garbana, Trespali Kota, and a Garebana, and a Vita, would like a gila, Julie puts up on us like it. Mama had asked him special things this time shelves on the walls, a private entrance. He thought that she meant this room to be a nursery where several children could sleep. He thought it was a wonderful idea. He painted it his favorite color, sky blue, and made large windows looking out over a green hill and the church spires beyond. But nothing happened. Mama's belly did not grow, yet she seemed in a frenzy of activity over the house. Finally, an anxious papa approached his wife to tell her that the new room was finished and ready to be occupied. And mama, they say, replied, good, it's for you. Your line, Pardamala, sorry, Asala, I did. 
अब हजुरी बाल चाहिँ कोठा बनाए मज्जा लाई बुढे चाहिँ जुम्ली बच्चा पाउला भर अनि रेडी भएछ त ल अब त जा आउन निकाल दिउ के कस्तो रमाइलो है पैराग्राफ 11 एन्ड सो इट वाज दैट मामा डिस्कभर्ड द ओन्ली मीन्स अफ बर्थ कन्ट्रोल अवेलेबल टु अ क्याथोलिक वुमन अफ अ टाइम नाउ दिस इज रिमार्केबल सी जुडिथ ओर्टिस कफर इज क्रिटिसाइजिंग क्रिश्चियनिटी इज क्रिटिसाइजिंग क्याथोलिसिजम व्हिच प्रिवेंटेड वुमेन फ्रॉम यूजिंग फैमिली प्लानिंग एन्ड हाउ वुमेन्स लाइफ वाज रुइन्ड बिकॉज अफ रिलिजन यो ख्याल गर्नुस् है दिस इज अ फेमिनिस्ट राइटिंग एकदमै राम्रो कुरा आयो एन्ड सो इट वाज दैट मामा डिस्कभर्ड द ओन्ली मीन्स अफ बर्थ कन्ट्रोल अवेलेबल टु अ क्याथोलिक वुमन अफ अ टाइम सेक्रिफाइस हेर्नुस् कस्तो मलाई रमा मलाई मार्मिक लाग्यो के आफ्नो शरीर बचाउनलाई लोनेले बाहिर निकाल्नु पर्यो अब हजुर आमाले त सेक्स चाहिन्थ्यो नि त हजुर आमाले त यौन सम्पर्क गर्ने मन त लाग्थ्यो होला नि हैन सेक्स त डिजात हुन्छ नि तर हजुर बाले सुत्नु दियो भने पचास जना आउँछ अब क्याथोलिक महिलाहरुलाई चाहिँ पिल्सहरु प्रे गर्न दिएको भए कन्डम प्रे गर्न दिएको भए त हजुर आमाले त यौन सुख पनि पाउनु हुन्थ्यो भन्न जनाउनु पर्ने थियो हेर्नुस् कस्तो राम्रो कुरा गरेको कोर्ट कफरले कसरी चाहिँ धर्मले चाहिँ मान्छेलाई असर पार्छ भनेर हेर्नुस् त she gave up the comfort of papa sexual love for something she deemed greater the right to own and control her body so that she might live to meet her grandchildren me among them so that she could give more of herself to the ones already there so that she could be more than a channel for other lives kasto sada haru ta mara haru ke bhayo ta women are channel for other lives ta kofar le ke bande cha Women are not just channel for other lives. Maila bane ka aur ke jivan pa jaane saadhan matra bane ke. So that even now that time has robbed her of the elasticity of her body and of her amazing reservoir of energy. She still emanates the kind of joy that can only be achieved by living according to the dictates of one's own heart. Yo 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 essay ko message ho. Yo ni bande ko message kyu tapan arlay? Tapa arlay Judith already scoffer le kya bande se yaan? live according to the dictates of your heart kasari bachna de haru maila haru hello ketti haru tapai jindagi ma aphno man mauji le bachnu chhe ke tapai ko man le je bhanche tesari bachnu chhe kasto ram garnu chha yo line ma lai man pa this is the message political message okay hamile paragraph sakyau kya paragraph 11 ka hai oh अरे सिद्धि इसे सरप्राइजिंग मैं लगे थे इसे अज भी मैं लास्ट लाइन से साहे मन पे कि पैराफ इलेवन को के लिव अकॉर्डिंग टू द डिक्टेट्स अफ वंस ओन हार्ट अरे ये कुछ देखा हजर आम चाहे अब 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 भी बच्चा पाए वाने शरीर चाहिए फ्लोरा जस्तु हो दाँत झर्च गाला चावरी पर्चन अड़न सक हजर बाला नया कोठा बना लगा बाहर निकाल दिने भो तर इसमें इसमें बड़ा मार्मिक कुरा के हजुर आमा ने निल खोजे होने नहीं तर हजुर आमा सब उपाय नहीं कि हजुर बास सुत्यो यौन संपर्क कर शरीर ने तो सेक्स मग्स नहीं सेक्स गए प्रेम नहीं बच्चा रहता यहाँ बुझ् पर्व कुछ के हो फेमिस्ट कुछ के कैथोलिक कम्युनिटी में हार्ड लाइन को जो कैथोलिक कट्टर क्रिस्चियन हो त्यो क्रिश्चियन कट्टरता के महिला परिवार निजन को चक्की खाना दीदे पाप लग्स मार अभी महिला परिवार निजन को चक्की धार्मिक कारण खाना नपाए पी के भच्चा बोक बोक भसी बीस बच्चा पाने पे के महिला हालत खराब भाई हे तब के देखने भाई जुड़ित ओरिट्स कफर ने के गो कसरी चाहे पोर्ट एरिकन सोसाइटी में अथवा कंजर्वेटिव ट्रेडिशनल कैथोलिक कमिटी में चाहे महिला धर्म को कारण सफल भैर देखा जस्ट कल्पना करो तो सज में परिवार निजन के चक्की कंडोम पिल्स सजी उपलब्ध भारत भाई अथवा धार्मिक कारण महिला पिल्स प्रयोग कर नरोक भाई तो यह हजुर आमा चाहे चक्की खा रहा बस्तो अजुर बास संगे सुत्त इसी बार बार बच्चा पाने पर्ने थे है बिटर रियलिटी रो कुछ तबी सोसाइटी में जोड़न सकूँ नहीं नेपाल में थुप्रे अ जो आउटगोइंग पुस्ता हम आमा को हजर आमा को वहाँ कस बार बच्चा पाने भाव चाहे पाए हो परिवार निजन को साधन न भर न पाए अरे यहाँ कफर के महिला यदि साँची के फ्रीडम दिने वाले उन्नीर चाहे 
यो परिवार दिनों के साधन प्रति एक्सेस दिनों पाल सा बनी तर यो कर तो माने पढ़ने वाला बने ये बाहर खोजी करने वाले इसको रिटर्नल एनालिसिस करने वाला पढ़ने वाला बने इश्यू हो एक्सीडेंस हो तो माने यहाँ मले कते ये लैग होने पाल सा इसको इनफॉरमेशन कते माले लैग होने पाल सा मले ले समझी रहा सही ना ये वाला पॉलिटिकल क्वेश्चन थ्योरी तो बेला माचा है मेरा जून बेला माचा है जोड़ी और इस कॉफ़र लिख रहा थियो तो मेरा वाला डिबेट थियो के कश्मीरी से मेरा आरु लाई राइट के दिने किन दिने और 1960s में तो अमेरिका में मेरा अधिकार को आंदोलन चल रहा थियो रा मेरा अधिकार को आंदोलन चल रहा है री सब ने � परिवार निर्णय का चक्की में कंडोम एक्सेस पाए तो इस पर से महिला और ले मन नलाय नलाय बच्चे जन मनु पारे नहीं इले धेरे ही रामरे काम कर रहे के यहाँ मुझे लिया कर चुकी यहाँ रही उड़ा हाउ कैथोलिक विमेन फॉर्ट अगेंस्ट बैटिकंस प्रोहिबिशन ऑफ कंडरसेटिव्स बैटिकंस सिटी ले पोप ले चाहिए हम reiterated that the church's ban on artificial contraception. 600 scholars, including many clergy, dissented from its teaching, sparking a debate and caused a crisis over authority in the worldwide church. While uh, much attention is focused on the epic battle between theologians and the institutional church, while undoubtedly was significant as a historian of Catholic women, I find the responses of Catholic lay women even more compelling. What is Yemen Bittai? Yemen Bittai was a papal encyclical released by Pope Paul VI in 1968. However, it wasn't the first papal document to private contraception use 38 years prior to that encyclical Pope Pius XI had released a document called Casti can be barring Catholics from using artificial contraception. There were some clear differences between the two encyclicals. The first insisted that uh, procreation was the chief purpose of the sexual act. The second said that the unity purpose, that is the use of sex as a means of expressing love and strengthening the marital union was equally important. See the debate. Of debate, what is the purpose of चार्ज लेके आवाने बच्चा जन्म आऊँ अब महिला वादी और नारी वादी लेके आवाने प्रेम करूँ but Paul VI Paul VI ultimately insisted that the unity could not be separated from the procreative according to the Catholic Church each and every conjugal act must be open to life वाने को चार्ज लेके आवाने कि सेक्स घर में बच्चा जन्म इंसान रोकना होता है ना अब महिला लेके आवाने कि रोकना न पाएँ even though he meant Vitae largely a formed and established teaching. It was still controversial. Role of Catholic women, I will say, 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 I तो मालिक फिर 2019 से मालिक हो जा रही थी फिर उस तो आज बंदा चार वर्ष आगे मालिक को उस पढ़ाई रहा थे तो बोला मालिक हो जा ले आ रही थी आशा सा तो मालिक फिर ये सिर्फ खोज मिले सा आ मालिक वीडियो इन्हें लोग पॉज कर चुके हैं वो आ मालिक साथ रख के करें बंदा हरी यो ऐसे लाइन में लाइन पढ़े अने पढ़नुस रा इस पची इसको आधार में ऐसे को रेटोरिकल एनालिसिस लिखे रा मलाई सही मेल करने से मलिया दरिप रा बताएं तब मैं लाई रेटोरिकल स्ट्रेटजी बताएं अनि यो कॉफर को ऐसे लाई चांगरीली संग दांजे रा बताएं अनि फादिमान संग दांजे अनि चांगरीली इसको मटकी समानता सा बने फादिमान संग कसरी फरक सा बने अ थैंक यू सो मच अब क्लास में बैठा हुआ है तब धन्यवाद